Well, welcome to Larford Lakes. We're here at this fantastic complex for the final of the Golden Reel competition. There have been 24 qualifiers on a variety of venues up and down the country, and this is the final of all of those qualifiers. Each winner from those qualifiers are here today to compete for £50,000, and this film is going to take you through all the twists and turns. forecast was that there was going to be little wind and it was flat calm on arrival there were fish everywhere these conditions obviously lend themselves to fishing shallow and when the fish are shallow they obviously give themselves away it was very clear that there were loads of fish down in the early numbers just laid underneath the surface but the match was three hours away so anything could happen There were 26 anglers in this final, however there were four blockers. Those blockers were basically there to take away the end peg advantage. And the blockers were there to draw first, and then once they drew for their end pegs, it was then a case of the 26 competitors drawing out for their pegs. Right, we're drawing so the in well. the qualification order. And we're starting with number one, which was Saturday the 11th of April, here at Larford Lakes. He won the match with £170 and 12 ounces, Paul Cornwell. Give him a round of applause. Within just a few short minutes, the draw was done. There were one or two anglers fancying their draw, however, there were some that didn't quite fancy their draw. But on a match like this, you never really know where the fish are gonna settle. So all the competitors headed off to their pegs. The match times for this match were gonna be 12 until five. And as you can imagine, when you're fishing as late as five o'clock, then that really lends itself to margin fishing. So this match was gonna go right to the wire. Well, my role for the day was just basically to stay on the bank and I was producing several live streams throughout the match just to update people who couldn't attend the event, just to let them know how the match was going. Phil Briscoe's role was basically to base himself at the stage and he was getting information from spotters on the bank who were letting him know as and when fish were being caught around the lake and he could then relay that over the tannoy to let the competitors and spectators know what had been caught. The first hour was slow as expected, however, one or two anglers did emerge as clear leaders. Well, we are one and a half hours in and we've already got one or two clear leaders looking up the lake. He's definitely seeming to be fishing better at that top end of the lake. I'm currently now behind, um, this is peg, peg three behind me. Andy Powers is there, he's just had a he hasn't had a, a flurry of fish, but he's just had a few fish he's had. I think he's got six fish now. Four or five of them are decent fish. He's just ticking over nicely. He's doing well at this end of the lake. The lad opposite him, he's catching. Well, he's caught a few. Other than that, it's a little bit slow to be fair. However, at this top end, looking up the lake, into the sunshine, up there we have got Kevin Wadge, who's, um, who's doing well on the end peg. He's next to Jordan Holloway, who's also doing well. But then the other side of the island, you've got Stu Fotheringham, who was admitting to £55 about 10 minutes ago, so he's doing really well. Other than that, everyone else is just kind of picking off odd fish. It's um, We expected a slow start, and that's what it is. You know, there's the odd F1's been caught, the odd proper carp, 
some anglers seem to be targeting the silverfish as well and they're just ticking over with silverfish but to be fair they're not exactly catching enough to put any sort of a weight together just yet we're fishing 12 to 5 today so we're expecting things to get busier as um, as, as the, the match goes on we're expecting the, the sport to pick up certainly fishing until 5 o'clock you, you expect um, fish to come down these margins and this lake is known for that and we know that obviously the fish run well into double figures so it's going to run right to the wire on this one at the moment though we've got Kevin after after an hour and a half we've got Kevin Wise is up there we've also got um, Jordan Holloway doing well and then we've also got uh, Stu Fotheringham over on the other side of the island all three of those incidentally are catching on the method feeder but like I said all three anglers are actually on the island which is obviously it can be a, um, a huge um, fish holding area but just for the time being everyone's just kind of biding the time picking off fish where they can and they're hoping that the second half is going to be much better the interesting thing was that those anglers who caught early managed to keep putting the odd fish in the net and that just kept them in front by the midway stage it was clear that there were three or four anglers that were leading the competition and if they could keep putting fish in the net just ticking over they should be able to keep themselves in front where the other anglers who had had a slower start they were really hoping they were going to get a late run of fish late on down the margins. Welcome back everybody we are over on the Burbank end peg blocker it says here another good fish he must have got a great weight now he's one of the regular anglers doing really well but we're going to find out how the lads actually in the competition are getting on over here as you can see it's still flat calm here that's another good fish he must have a good weight now right here we go peg 14 this is Andy Christie and he's been catching quite well last time we were over here he was fishing in exactly the same spot as you can see he's on his top kit F fishing virtually behind him against the bank underneath that very inviting bush he's had some fish there so we think he's doing better than what we originally thought not quite sure what weight he's got but he must be one of the leaders now certainly in the top top five he must be so he's been catching quite well down that down that left hand margin Stu Fotheringham has been doing well all day and he just keeps picking off fish which must be keeping him certainly in the top two or three he's back on the method feeder he's not really come off it every time we've been around he's been on the method feeder but last time he was under underarming onto a long pole line where he caught a couple of fish but as you probably saw just then he's back against the island and we just we know he's just had um, probably three or four fish since we were last here so he just keeps picking off fish it's going to make him very very difficult to beat today if he keeps doing that unless someone has a mega run of fish late on but that is exactly what can happen on this sort of a venue so Stuart he's on peg 15 I haven't seen him go anywhere near his margin yet maybe he won't even need to he's pinging pellets out there as you can see off the front edge of the island don't know if he's caught on that line but yeah it's um he's gonna be very hard to beat if he continues picking off fish like that this one along we've got alex walker not really seeing alex catch too many he's got a lovely left hand margin he's got some um some lilies there and obviously a platform we'll see where he's fishing at the moment most anglers now are targeting the margin just gonna keep back away from this edge yeah he's down his left hand margin as well if we look down to the right we've now got Barry Mason as you can see he's fishing down this margin up against the side of this platform Barry's had a couple of fish recently but I know early on he was struggling it's gone very very quiet now it's funny it keeps going in spells you know you keep going 15 20 minutes without fish being caught and then all of a sudden there's another flurry there we go Stu following he's just hooked another fish there as you can see and he's struggling with it out there he's just come right to the top out there where he's hooked it I don't know if there's anything out there that would suggest that there was something out there the way that he stood up to play that he's got the rod up in the air again now so I don't know if there's any sort of anything down on the bottom or whether it's twigs branches or anything like that but 
he's got it away from that whatever it is I'll just stop here to hopefully see him land his fish yeah so it looks like there's something out there that's interfering with his rig and stuff when he hooks fish but he's got that away anyway so playing it down to his left as you can imagine because down to his right he's got that big lily bed there which he'll want to keep it away from there but he's going to be very hard to beat he's been so consistent throughout today's match the fish hooked here down the margin Alex Walker that fish is powering out of the peg sounds a good fish what Stuart's got just got it near the net then it just powered straight out this one here that Alex is playing a shot straight out into the middle of the lake and it's pulled out possibly foul looked I don't know unfortunately he's lost that Stuart Fotheringham still playing his fish still got plenty of power left in it I can hear the reel back winding it sounded a good fish nothing being caught behind me down to the right it's very quiet down this Burbank at the moment very quiet unless they're catching at the bottom end let's see if Stu can land this fish sounds a very powerful fish that one Stuart is a former winner of this event I think it's obvious to say he'd love to win it again but when he drew this peg I know one or two people fancied him on this peg I think some people have uh, made one or two wages with the bookies on him he's got it he's going to be very difficult to beat I'm, I'm going to stick my neck out and say I think he must be leading by now and again is he? You probably just heard that Stu Fotheringham has just had another fish, he's keeping himself right up there. I'm just working my way back up the grass bank now. I've just been watching Andy Power down there on peg one, who was struggling earlier. However, he's gone down his left-hand margin and, you know, when he's feeding there are fish there. And if anybody can kind of capitalise on an opportunity like that, then Andy is certainly one of those anglers. I really think Andy's going to kind of make a lot of ground up now. Uh, it's just turned three o'clock, so there are two hours left, and that is when you'd expect a margin like that to come strong. Um, so I think Andy is going to make quite a bit of a comeback now. So the news so far with two hours um, to go is basically this top end is still dominating. If I swing round, Stu Fotheringham is over there opposite the island. Um, he's just ticking over. He had a great start. He was admitting to probably 60 pounds, but I think he's had two fish since then. And then further up here on this bank, on the grass bank opposite the island, um, the two anglers that are standing out there are um, Kevin Wadge and um, Jordan Holloway. Um, I mean, Kevin's just ticked over. And Jordan keeps kind of, he, he had a spell early, then it just went really quiet for over an hour, and then he just had another little quick burst of fish as well. So it looks at the minute like they are Steve the... Steve Openshaw, uh, he's had a lot of silvers as well, Steve Openshaw. Lee Edwards has caught a few fish as well, but at the minute it sounds like they're the standout. Well, the three anglers really are still. Um, it's Stu Fotheringham or on the other bank, uh, Jordan Holloway and the other is Kevin Wodge. So they're the three at the minute that are standing out, still going into this final two hours. Well, there's just over an hour left and to be honest we expected more margin fish being caught there are fish down the margins however lots of anglers are actually feeding down the margin certainly over on the grass bank which is over there where it's very very shallow close in they're feeding there with the pole pole cups and the fishing there with the pole and you can see the fish there there are lots of fish in that shallow water but they are proving very very difficult to catch within the last 40 minutes i bet we've only seen about four fish caught down the margin but there are loads of fish there so whether those fish are going to switch on and suddenly start feeding we don't know 
we quite often see that it's amazing as soon as the nets come out after the match that's when fish come really close in hopefully that's not going to happen today hopefully the fish are going to come in on the feed um, and let some anglers accumulate more weight but um, there's just over an hour left just about to head down the um, down the Burbank um, and just find out what's actually been caught down here but, uh, but at the minute the same names are still in the front um, sounds like it's Stu Fotheringham um, Kevin Wadge is doing well we think Jordan Holloway is doing well as well other than that um, while some of the other anglers certainly big name anglers Angli Andy Powers um, Andy Bennett um, they've caught they haven't quite caught as many as these guys so these lads some of these lads must have probably 70 80 pound now but anything can happen going into this last hour as we headed into the final 45 minutes it was clear that it, it had become quite hectic for some of the competitors we're into the last 35 minutes and as predicted it's got a little bit hectic it looked like Stu Fotheringham was winning the competition quite easily he was saying he was on 120 pounds um, that was up to about 20 minutes ago well, however First landing fish. There we go. So they're still catching fish. Uh, Andy Christie is on the left of Stu Fotheringham, so they've caught really well over there. Okay, Certainly, the fish. you're getting Long the You're getting the picture now that 19. there's lots of fish being caught now. I'm currently behind Perry Stone has been struggling. He's just hooked two in two drop ins. They're feeding down the margins now. There are fish bubbling for the feed. It's only that deep in these margins on grass bank. There are fish there, and it's evident now that some of them are going on the feed. Andy Power was really struggling, but over the last hour and a half since he went down his margin, he started to creep back into it. But he's literally just had three more Perry fish. And he's just had a couple of fish down Perry his margin again, so he's slowly dragging himself back up. Andy Andy Bennett that is three that's three fish in the last 10 minutes for Andy Bennett so it's gonna be very hectic 30 minutes now it still looks like Stu Fotheringham's probably in the lead but Andy Power has been catching up and he's down behind me you're getting the idea now from the tannoy from Phil Briscoe who's announcing fish as they're getting hooked and landed Andy Powers is down here on peg one and he's gradually getting back into it and he's just landed that fish now this is where the experience of some of these commercial anglers is this is where the experienced anglers are really going to come into it now keeping the cool trying to land these fish quickly but efficiently make sure they land them because these are very very important and let's face it some of these lads have been struggling for the last three hours so to suddenly get a run of fish like this they've got to have Pretty much the mentality that you know they've got to stay cool calm and make sure that they land at every fish and fish right the way up to 5 p.m it had been a really hectic last 45 minutes and one or two anglers had really shot up the leading table so we thought it was between four key anglers that andy power was in the running we thought andy bennett was in the running kevin wadge had managed to tick over steadily from his early lead and then there was obviously Stu following him so the live weighing was really focused on those anglers well that was an incredible last 45 minutes it was like a completely different venue as you've just seen from the live stream it was just hectic you could hear the, the tannoy from phil announcing the number of fish that were getting hooked not all landed unfortunately for some anglers but that just goes to show that you know sometimes by having events like this that run you know between the hours of 12 and 5 can make a big difference you know sometimes when matches finish at three and four sometimes the fish just haven't moved in and that last 45 minutes it's been like a completely different venue it's been the, the finish that we wanted we don't know if you know anyone's kind of done enough to 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 catch those leaders but it's been great to see that some anglers who have to be quite honest have really struggled they've had a bit of a poor match and um, they managed to put some fish in the net and at least you know hopefully enjoy their day and their experience but you know because you always want anglers to at least have a day's fishing um but i mean the word on the street is that Stu Fotheringham has has got the top weight you know he had a, a very steady lead and or he was right up there with the leaders but he kept on putting fish in the net whereas other people that were around him that had caught the same amount kind of stopped catching they just had some really blank spells and he just carried on putting fish in the net he's fishing on different lines just kept putting a fish in the net and that possibly has kept him in front Andy Powers is having a bit of a run of fish Andy Bennett had a fantastic probably 25 30 minutes where he had something like nine in nine drops incredible but then he lost three fish which completely ruined his swim 
but that's what happens when you're fishing like this close to margins in shallow water for big fish so we're going to have the weighing now we're going to do the weighing as one complete live stream which we'll obviously be showing you footage of and that will obviously give you a taster for what everyone's caught because we know some of the numbers of fish we don't always necessarily know the size or weight so that's going to be very very interesting the first to weigh in was Andy Power that wind never really got going today we thought it was going to get stronger it was blowing down here at one stage but we can't really say it's affected the fishing because um, they still caught fish even when it was flat calm and they were fished down here this morning when it was flat calm as well Peg one, Andy Power, 122 pound 5 ounces. 122 pound, well done Andy. That late run was obviously better than what we thought it was going to be. Like I say, we only heard the number of fish, we didn't know what size they were. The fish now. The next angler that we thought was in contention was Andy Bennett, and he was just a little bit further along the grass bank. Proper gear on, they know the best techniques for landing them, they're landing fish quickly, and you don't realise how big they are sometimes. So that's going to be two ways, just that one net. So he has, he's got skimmers in that last net there in the middle one, so this is his biggest bag. 136.15, well done. Well done Andy, well done mate. 136 pound is ended up weighing, absolutely fantastic. The next angle that we knew had caught some fish was Kevin Wodge and he was just on the far end of the island. Leading the competition at one stage. He was cast into the back, if you saw the streams earlier, he was cast into the back of the island. Initially he was cast into where my finger is now, just to the, just off the back edge of the island. But then when that slowed down, he then just inched it over over to this bush here and, and, and had another run of fish there. But then I think he's caught some shorter. But not at the end, it really slowed down for him towards the end. Whether the fish moves, we don't know, we don't know, but he, he slowed down catching for whatever reason. Some good fish in there though, we could tell the way he was playing the fish how long it was taking him to land them that uh, they were of a good stamp just shows you doesn't it you know once your peg goes 101 fantastic well done kev 101 pound two the next key angler to weigh in was Stu fotheringham we know he caught loads of fish but had he done enough to stay in front who we strongly suspect to be the winner claiming or admitting to 170 pounds that's a heavy net of fish. So we were talking about 170 pound. So we'll find out how accurate that estimate is. 32.6 on that first way. Well, not counting that first silver fish net. Again, a good stamp of fish. Not seeing many F1s to be honest. Lots and lots of proper carp. Another very big net of fish, heavy net of fish. <laughs> 50 seven. Fantastic. Brilliant. What's that, Jill? 174. Absolutely fantastic. 174 pound. That 170 pound estimate weren't bad, were it? 174. Come on. <laughs> well, there's your leader so far, 174 pounds. Well, what an exciting weighing that was. Completely. We thought it was going to be a surprise. You know, when, when lads have gone like two and three hours really struggling and then they get a late run of fish, sometimes it's really difficult to predict what sort of a weight they've got and that's exactly what's happened. So there have been quite a few surprise weights, but the average weight has been really, really good. There ended up being loads of fish caught, albeit for lots of anglers in that last 45 minutes. Stu Fotheringham was saying or they were estimating that he'd got 170 pound and as it turns out that estimate was very very accurate so all the competitors are now over on grass bank now we're here in front of the stage where phil briscoe is just about to join us where we are just about to announce the result and present a 50,000 pound check to a new golden reel champion oh absolutely fantastic i mean we're all shattered but at the end of the day, uh, it's exactly what was predicted. It was a difficult match for sort of two, two and a half hours. Uh, those that have got a few bonus fish early, great. But it became pretty evident that it was going to be a three or four horse race, basically. And uh, 
it, it, the fishing in the last hour and a half was absolutely phenomenal. I, I personally was trying to keep up with the fish catching and I couldn't. You know, as quickly as I announced somebody catching the fish, there was somebody else landing one, somebody else landing one. Uh, the last hour was just absolutely out of this world. Uh, and you know, it, it, it wasn't a, a massive um, runaway victory. It became quite close where any three or four anglers could have won that today. But the good thing was there were some great weights. Everybody thoroughly enjoyed it. The weather was kind and just a fantastic day. Yeah, thanks Phil. Been great commentary throughout today. Uh, obviously let us know what's been happening on the bank. And uh, we've had loads of turn up as well, haven't we? Loads of spectators. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, perhaps next year a few more would be nice because I think it lifts the anglers, you know, puts them all on the edge of the seats and everything else. And they're missing a great day. They would have seen today world champions top class anglers performing back to back with each other and it's a really interesting watch fishing isn't a boring sport you can learn a lot and they can see it pick up a lot of tips and they would have enjoyed today if they come along so next year come along yeah, nice one thanks phil thank you first second and third right in third place Collecting £2,000 is Andy Power! Yeah. Well done, Andy. Another envelope off me, but not the one you wanted. But well done, mate. Absolutely fantastic. Check your check to make sure I made it out right. Seriously. Right, in second place, picking up £3,000 was. Andy Bennett! Well done, Andy. Better if you knock down the face of the wet chip for a minute. There you go, 3,000, mate. And your medal. Whoop, your medal. Just check I've made it out correctly. And the winner today, picking up £50,000 and the prestigious trophy, second time winner of this event. He's fished an absolute blinder. He was in front virtually all the <laughs> way through. And he's ended up from peg 42, permanent peg, peg 15 on the day, weighing in 174 pound and 9 ounces. You. Stu Fotheringham! Yes, Go on! <laughs> Stuart Fotheringham, he was a favourite, we thought he was winning the competition for quite a while and it looks like that estimate of £170 was very, very accurate, he's ended up weighing 100 sorry, his estimate was 170 as had £174, absolutely amazing. Have you got a minute for us? Of course I have, yeah. Here he is. Hold the toe to Stu. For the second time. Yeah, my name's there from first. Let's get him, let him get his photograph taken first. 
have a quick word with him. We did get a chance to see how he was fishing at certain stages of the match, but I'm sure there are some things we might have missed. Stu, massive congratulations, Thank mate. You. Just give us a quick rundown, mate. You started the method to the island, didn't you? Yeah, and well, I've started, I've mugged a fish at the start. Have you? I mugged the fish at the start, <laughs> and then I, I just chucked the method to the island. I've caught on that all day. Yeah? Uh, you chucked on a, like a long pole line as well. Did you catch many I've there? I never caught on that. You I've never caught on that? I had two casts on that. Right. And I've not had a fish on that. And then back across to the island you caught, and then you've had three fish late on in the last 10 minutes. Yeah, down edge, only because I, I didn't want to get another hook when I thought about it. I knew it was black down there, just being black down there for two hours. Really? You just so, never had to go down there because no, you were catching no, on the method? I've, just, I've been winning after probably 50 minutes, I've just kept on catching. Same as the first final. Is it? Yeah, right. I, I was winning that after an hour and I've just kept on catching. I didn't even go down the edge that day. Fantastic. I've only gone down the edge today because I've, I've been broke probably five or six times and right. I just didn't want to get hooked when I just thought I'd go down the edge because it was black and I've had three. <laughs> Job <laughs> done mate, absolute yeah. massive congratulations Thank mate. You. Enjoy your evening mate. Yeah, we'll do, mate. Well Cheers. done pal. It's been an absolutely incredible event. It's been a long journey for some of these anglers to get to this final. And don't forget, this is actually an open event. So if this is something that you'd like to compete in next year, then just make sure you head on over to the goldenrealangling.co.uk website, where that will be telling you the dates and time of when the 2022 tickets go on sale. So that just leaves us to thank everybody who's taking part in this event this year. Thank you to the organisers and Larford Lakes Fisheries and a massive congratulations to Stu Fotheringham who has not only won the competition but he's actually gone and won it for a second time.